Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, a new year, a new season. Delighted to be crossing the, over to a new country this time around uh, with a Ugandan epidemiologist, Dr. Catherine Kyobutungi. She is the executive director at the Africa Population and Health Research Center, APHRC. She's also recently, at least in 2018, been elected into the African uh, Academy of Sciences, which is a big deal. We will learn about that. A member of the board to the Partnerships for Maternal and Newborn and Child Health, PMNCH. She serves on the Council of USIU Africa, United uh, States International University, and has also been a member of the Lancet Site Commission on Peaceful Societies through Health and Gender Equality. She also recently had her Jubilee birthday. You know, that's a very big deal. And I think we are the first to host her in a reflection of what 50 years of living and impacting global health mm -hmm. and population looks like. Dr. Catherine. <laughs> Welcome to Development Dynamics. And this is an opportunity for us first to say happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. 50 plus three days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how does it look and how does it feel to, 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 to be on the fifth floor and to look back at, uh, at life from, from this view? Um, it feels the same, actually. Really? <laughs> That's a surprising thing. <laughs> I, I think I've been growing slowly, so it, it, like age just catches up with you. No one can tell. Yeah. No so one can tell. It's not like there was fireworks and then <laughs> I turned 50 or anything like that. Oh my goodness. You have had such a life and such legacy. <clears throat> and mm. uh, we are really delighted that um, we get to reflect together. You get to reflect with us um, on your life and on your mm. career, on mm. your on your profession, on, 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 on global impact that you've been having uh, over, over these many years and to dehumanize, or rather to humanize development mm. um, in a way that only you can. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. welcome, welcome on board. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we should maybe start by having the cruising for you. Happy birthday together. So happy <laughs> birthday to you. Oh my God. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Catherine. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> Welcome. At least starting off on that note. Um, so 50 years ago, you were born. And, and, and so mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's look back at your ancestry and history. Where, where was that? And what, what did it look like at the time? OK. Um, interesting. When I, was, when I was applying for the passport, mm -hmm. they asked where I was born. Right. And I actually put the hospital where I was born and uh -huh. the town where I was born. Mm -hmm. And it's only later that I realized where I was born should not really be the physical place. Yes. It should be like my ancestry place, like uh -huh. where my parents came from. Yes. So I was born in northern Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite strange because mm. when people hear my name and this year I was born, I was like, no, you're not from there. Mm. And which is the whole point. Yeah. So I was born in a, a hospital in northern Uganda called right. Lacho Hospital. Lacho. Um, those who come from there would know. It's a private, uh, I think, mission hospital. Mm -hmm. um, because my parents were civil servants. Mm -hmm. So my dad was a police officer. Okay. And my mom was a midwife. So it was at that time, my dad, my dad used to be thrown in all parts of Uganda right. as a police officer. Right. So that was during one of his postings okay. in Gulu, and that's where I was born. All right. And so, yeah, um, from Gulu, I don't remember much about Gulu, to be honest, <laughs> but um, I know I was born in Gulu. And then from there, I think we went to Yembale, which is near the border with Kenya. Then from Bali, I think my dad was posted to Kampala. Right. And so we were like a migrant family, family right. uh, moving from place to place. Yeah. And then uh, from Kampala, yeah. my dad retired yeah. before 40. Oh, oh, wow. So he retired when I was about four oh. years old. Ooh. All right. And then we were uprooted from Kampala. But. And uh, my dad retired at a farm in mm -hmm. southwestern Uganda. Mm -hmm. 
it's a place it used to be Bushenyi district now it's called Shema district mm -hmm. uh, Matoke land like we are really surrounded <laughs> by everywhere you look is Matoke so it's uh, it's nice and beautiful and green yes and so my dad retired before 40 mm -hmm. and took us really a very young family mm. from this life of a civil servant yeah. to life on a farm but, but, so my yeah. earliest memories really are a little bit in Kampala yeah. and a little bit in the village in yeah. Shema. Yeah. And um, so in this Shema, you, the, is that where you go to school? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I, by the time we retired, my dad retired, as I said, we were very young. Mm -hmm. I think I was four or five. Right. And so I started school mm -hmm. really in the village in Shema. Mm. And were you as an a, only child? No, mm. we are five. <laughs> we are five of us. Okay. At that time, yeah. then later I had two more brothers. So now we are seven. Okay. But uh, but we are five. I was the second last born at the time. Now I'm the fourth. Yeah. And there are two, three other people younger than me. Yeah, yeah. So you're right in the middle. Right in the middle. Yes, yeah. I'm the middle child. Mm -hmm. um, child. Yes. <laughs> Fifty-year-old child. <laughs> and my da and my parents are middle child. Mm. Yeah. So really, it's uh, right in the village mm. in uh, mm. in Shema district now. Mm -hmm. It's a place called Masheruka. Mm. So that's that's why I went to school mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not for long mm -hmm. because as I've said my my mom was a midwife. Okay. So my dad retired, my dad my mom didn't retire. Mm -hmm. My mom What's was actually at school at this other time getting another diploma. Oh wow. And so as soon as she finished we moved from the village school where my par my dad was, mm -hmm. where the dad the farm was. Mm -hmm to another village school where my mom was posted okay. um, in a hospital. Yeah. A place called Chitagata. It has hot springs. The Chitagata means hot springs. Oh. So that that's the Beautiful. yeah, that's the landmark. Right. So most of my schooling was in Chitagata. <laughs> seeing yeah. hot springs every day <laughs> uh yes i was there recently and it looks different <laughs> but <laughs> but that was that was um yeah mm. that's why i went to school and finished my primary school your entire eight, is it eight years in oh seven years seven years seven years yeah. all right yeah so but, i went to Chicago when i was in p4 mm -hmm, primary four mm -hmm. so p1 to p3 i did mm, it in mm, now mm. mashiruka mm. what uh, do you have fond memories of primary school <sighs> no <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't because it was so tough. Oh. It was tough coming from a city. Yeah. Um, I don't know, civil servant family. Mm. We were used to putting on shoes. Then we yeah. got the village and they say you can't put on shoes. Oh, like you, you can't. can't. We couldn't put on shoes and it was a huge shock for us. Oh. We, they cut our hair. They couldn't. Oh. And so I don't, uh, from that perspective, no, I don't have yeah. fond, fond memories, memories of school. Yeah. I, m like my memory of school in Chitagata is walking. Mm. In yeah, the foot. morning, yeah. very early in the morning, mm. and stepping on stones mm. in a Maram Road. Mm. I have that memory, like mm. it's so vivid in my mm. mind because mm. it was so painful, mm. <laughs> like stopping, stepping on stones in the cold mm. and running to school. They, mm. There used to be a, a warning bell, and once the bell rang, you knew that if you're late, you'd mm. be whipped, so mm. we'd run, mm. like tiptoeing on stones. Mm. And, um, and was it for many kilometers? No, it wasn't. It was mm. about, I don't know, maybe two or three. Mm. So it would take us 15, 20 minutes mm. running mm. to that's, get to school. That's still quite quite some distance. Yes, mm. yeah, 15, 20 minutes mm. to get to school. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, those are my memories of mm. school. Mm. Mm. And um, I think, of course, this was during Amin's time. Yeah. For the people who know Uganda's history. Idi Amin, I yeah. mean, Idi Amin and then later Obote. Mm -hmm. Economically, it was very, very, very difficult. Mm. As a child, I know that it was mm. very difficult. It was a tough season. It was, it was very tough. Mm. Mm. Uh, being being um, children from... Uh, my mom at that time was a midwife. Mm -hmm. My dad was retired, as I've said. So mm. there was like no mm. uh, income mm. <laughs> from my dad mm. other than selling a cow here and there and mm. selling, I don't know how many liters of milk mm. to the neighbors mm -hmm. in the village. Mm. So economically, it was really, really mm. tough. So you're one income headed uh, family. Um, uh, I think like hard cash. Hard cash, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, of course, my dad, we had food and yeah, yeah. cows and milk from, from, the, fa from, from the, the farm. From the farm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, it. Uh, I remember it was very tough. Many yeah. times when we reminisce, when we go back home, we yeah, just laugh with about the it. But it was um, it was tough growing up. So you finish your primary school? Yes. Um, Say so yeah, I I finished at Chitagata Primary School. Right. 
um, the, um, I did very well, mm -hmm. very, very well. Mm. Those days there were no ranks like this TV station, mm. I don't mm. know, you know, mm. who's the top student in mm -hmm. the district or mm. which or the other, but I think if it was there, maybe I would be among the top five. Mm. I, I don't know, but I think I did very well. Right. So I ended up in a secondary school, Okay. now in a different district called yeah. Barara. Barara district. Um, it's called Mary Hill High School. And it was a Catholic mm -hmm. school. I'm not Catholic. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I ended up in a Catholic <laughs> school, but I ended up in a Catholic school. Mm. And um, it was another shock. Were you, did you have to, while clearing, was it grade seven or grade eight? So we, in Uganda, they do seven years. Seven so years. I finished primary seven. So primary and seven, then, did you, uh, while completing it, did you have to ch select schools, options? That you, uh, you, yes, uh -huh. we did. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I chose Mary Hill. Okay. For some reason, I don't remember All like right. the conversation about me choosing Mary Hill. Yeah. But I chose Mary Hill. And it's, it's the one and you it's ended up It's the one I, I ended up in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very good school. Right. Very strict. Mm -hmm. Catholic nuns mm -hmm. run it. Mm -hmm. We used to call it Mary Hill High Prison because it had these <laughs> high walls. <laughs> and the most ridiculous rules, <laughs> like okay, in retrospect, <laughs> the very ridiculous uh, rules like um, um, the fence is out of bounds mm. and if you're caught five meters, oh. uh, in, within five meters distance okay. of the fence, then you can be suspended. Oh. The office block was out of bounds during the weekend and... Uh, for I, my, look, I, for look back, I look back and I was like, those were the most ridiculous rules that oh, existed mm -hmm. but it was i mean it was i think um for for, for some reason yeah mm. probably some good reasons mm. i'm very generous mm. <laughs> for some good reasons mm. dealing with teenage girls mm. and um you know all that stuff mm. but it, i think it's also a reflection of the car the the education system that we have yeah. where we look at young people as people who need to control and yeah yeah. keep in check and put all these walls and boundaries around them yeah so um it was um, it was a very strict place but um in a way it was good mm. it shielded us from a lot of trouble for four years uh yes six six years yes okay. because um secondary school is four years mm. and then high school is two years so right. i did both my secondary school and high school in the same place in Mary Hill. yeah mm. Mm. yeah mm. any um any extracurricular things you are doing at the time uh in mary hill surprisingly i used to run cross country oh i used to run cross cross country yes okay. i ran cross country okay i wasn't very good at it but i did i oh. could finish a race cross country <laughs> race so that was i think that's really what i remember mm. um in terms of um extracurricular, extracurricular. yeah and um yeah in high school i did a bit of drama uh -huh. but really i was the person that read i read like crazy i read novels mm. and books mm. so that's that was my thing mm. i read mm. i read like in the end i was a librarian when i was in high school oh, okay. because i liked reading books. so much you are book yeah you are so completely yeah books. so other than class mm. academics yeah. really my thing was reading academically what were your favorite subjects all of them. I was good at everything, okay. so I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have favorites. So you must have <laughs> passed very well when you are when you are coming yes. to complete your six years. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. I um, I remember. I okay. I I went to secondary school. Yeah. And uh, just before I went to secondary school, I got malaria. Oh. And then um, we used to have treatment, mm -hmm. like in I you know at home, like mm -hmm. there's a nurse in the village or mm -hmm. there's some person who claims to be a doctor or whatever. So, and then I got an injection abscess. So I went to, I reported at secondary school with an injection abscess. An injection so, abscess? Abscess, 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 like my... Oh, okay. And so I was sick. I was limping. People thought I was, Whoa. you know, um, disabled when I reported. So my first term, I spent about three weeks in hospital. My goodness. When it escalated. Yeah. So I don't remember much. I just Ooh. I just reported pain. Then at some point it got so bad I was admitted, and um, I had surgery. <laughs> just imagine from malaria. Is that a unique <laughs> thing, or is it a common thing? Is that? I think that time it was common mm. because like uh, infection control hygiene was not a big thing. Mm -hmm. I think HIV brought new ways of doing things. Mm. So, uh, but I spent about uh, three weeks in hospital mm. in my first time in a boarding school. Wow away from home wow. and then i came back and uh, we did exams and i think i was like the fifth 
So we were like, hmm, this girl, she was sick and then she's the fifth. I was like, oh, I came from a village school, here I am. <laughs> I'm the fifth in the first term in, in high school. Okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and um, what do you attribute that to? Is it just book smart or is it? Yeah, I think I, I don't know. I think I had a certain gift of yeah. retaining things. Yeah, yeah. Because when I came back second yeah. term, I was yeah. the first, 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 second, first, all second, through. Yeah. all through until I did my senior oh, four wow. exams. Wow. Your parents so, must have been constantly proud. Uh, yes. Yeah. But it was surprising. Yeah. I didn't I didn't expect that I can come from a village school and go to this. It was among the top schools yeah. in the country yeah. and do so well. Yeah. So it was like, oh, okay i can do this so mm, mm, yeah so mm. like really high school secondary mm. school was a breeze